All right, so here we are. Just a little preview of some things that we can talk about and things I'm going to talk about in future lectures and also hands-on courses and perhaps maybe at a lab near you. Um, talk a little about contour here. Uh, contour is probably right now the hottest topic in dentures. Everybody wants to contour their dentures to make them look natural. I think that's wonderful. Um, I've been doing it for years. Um, there's a bit of an art to it, and there's also a bit of common sense. And uh, I kind of rely on a little of both, a little common sense and a little bit of art. And there's some techniques, which we can talk about at a later date. Um, but I just show this here just to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. It's very simplistic at this point. I just set some teeth because I didn't want to just talk to an empty screen. So here I have uh, just six teeth and I can kind of point things out as we go along. Um, so he, the basic gist of it is this. What affects or creates contour? You know, teeth. Okay, of course. But also the rip forms of the teeth. You know, uh, narrow roots, uh, long roots, short roots, wide roots. In those six teeth, you have a wide variation of root forms. And because those root forms are so varied and such a wide variation, um, there's going to be a variation in contour that relates to them. Um, arch form is another thing. Believe it or not, arch form, whether it's narrow or wide, tapering, those all affect how much anatomy we actually see in the tissue. Uh, wider um, arches tend to have very little uh, contour, whereas the narrow arches tend to have quite a bit because everything's all crowded together uh, and you end up getting a more skeletal look. So, you know, uh, investigate nature. If you have a doctor that you are friendly with, <laughs> I would hope you would be since uh, you work with doctors, and see if you can't get them to pop some pictures of retracted cheeks with actual healthy, fresh mouths. Take a look at the tissue. Uh, I think it's a real eye-opener when you start to see uh, how little real, you know, real hard contours there are in the mouth. They're very subtle. Um, the coloring will bring out some of the contours, of course, if you colorize your bases, but the contours themselves um, all relate to, uh, you know, uh, the root form, arch form, and tooth form. Uh, tooth form being the third um, effect. Uh, tooth forms affect it because of the prominence of the cervical areas, the cervical third, cervical uh, contour. Uh, obviously, cuspids have a have a much fuller cervical contour than, say, your laterals do, which tend to be more depressed because of its root form. You also have to remember that all of this relates as well to um, emergence profile, the way the tooth exits the tissue. You know, some if you really want to be a critical judge of work for denture setups and for contouring, look to see that it mimics emergence rather than just laying on top of the tissue. That drives me crazy. You see these, the teeth just look like they're laying right on top of the tissue. You want to project the image that it is emerging, that it's leaving the tissue. Um, so tooth angulation. Uh, the way the tooth comes out will affect where in the tissue area relate to the fullness of form. Um, mesial distal prominence, cervical prominence. You know, laterals show the most variation, by the way, uh, in tooth form. And if they show a variation in tooth form, they're also going to show a variation in root form. So keep that in mind as well when you're contouring your dentures. Um, one thing to mention, and that is that don't let the pre-molded CEJ on your teeth dictate uh, your emergence. In other words, um, and you've seen them, those molded, the molded CEJs. I, I, I tend to get away from them because whenever they're followed, what they do is they, they make the dentures look trenched. They make the area above the tooth and where the tissue meets the 
tooth, it makes it look trenched because the contour comes in and then it goes out. And I would prefer to have the tissue laying on the surface of the tooth so that it projects that emergence. Look at your fingernail sometime. A fingernail comes out, emerges. Kind of keep that mindset when you're uh, you know, coloring, or I should say carving your wax and, and contouring your bases, is that you're trying to mimic this emergence. I can't stress that enough. Stay away from the trenching. So how do I do that? What I usually do is I always select a longer mold than I need. Not a, not a bigger mold, but a longer mold. Um, because that then takes away from uh, takes away that CEJ, puts it way inside, way underneath, and it's not going to affect where I terminate the tissue at the area where the CEJ may arise. Now, it will change a little bit of the contour uh, of how it emerges, but you can always bring that up until you're just starting to make the curve into the tissue. Again, this is what's wrong with pre-molded CEJs as they dictate your emergence profiles. All right, well, the phone's ringing. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview. Stay tuned for more about these types of presentations and these kinds of educational venues. Have a good one. Oh, says it's still recording.